crowded around a gate protected by a few uniformed police officers, hundreds of New Yorkers eagerly awaited the formal opening of the brand new swimming pool at Thomas Jefferson Park. Sporting anxious smiles on their faces, young men, women and some children were more than excited about beating the heat at the park located in East Harlem. That was the scene on Saturday, June 27, 1936. And now more than eight decades later, opening day for the New York City swimming pools is still one of the most anticipated events for residents in the five boroughs. The short season of summer officially ended a few weeks ago in New York and New Jersey, and a storm is predicted to dump plenty of rain in the tri-state area overnight. Severe thunderstorms will be possible from Montreal, Canada, down through Syracuse, New York, with severe weather approaching the I-95 quarter by Wednesday evening, Aku weather meteorologist Ryan Adamson said. But for those still dreaming of summer, a collection of captivating images shared by the New York City Parks Department exclusively with Daily Mail. Com showcases how New Yorkers cooled down during hot summer days during the 1930s and beyond. Rebecca Burgess, the photo archivist and archives manager with New York City Parks Department, explained to Daily Mail that the concept of swimming pools first emerged in the city nearly 85 years ago, when the citywide parks department was created. What's really neat is that in 1934, because of the Works Progress Administration, WPA, and the Depression, national government funding put people to work and helped build up the city, Burgess said. The parks department had been in each borough, before becoming a consolidated parks department for all five boroughs, and as a result they got funding and put a ton of people to work. Share this article Share with the money received in 1934, officials surveyed the entire city to see what parks were established and what shape they were in. It was during this time period that famed city planner Robert Moses guided the urban planning within the city, Long Island, Rockland County and Westchester County, where he is credited with developing the region, Burgess explained. As a result, 12 WPA-funded pools were built and completed in New York City between 1936 and 1939. Slide me, slide me, slide me Some of the pools were in parks that already existed and others were actually built from the ground up in the 1930s. The WPA pools are kind of the grandest in the city, and most of them are still in use today, Berger said. In later photos you will see starting with the 1960s, one of my favorite parts is that, though the city didn't have as much funding to build these huge projects, they still wanted to make sure that the pools reached these more outer neighborhoods, not just the central neighborhoods. So you can see in the 1960s there's all of these great photos, where you can see like the swimmobile, which was literally a pool on a big truck that went from park to park and kids could come out and take a swim before it went on to the next park. That's a neat little side part of New York history that I think a lot of people might remember, but there aren't too many photos out there of it. Burgess added that the swimmobile wasn't the only alternate swimming pool that existed in New York City. Slide me we had something called a floating pool, and those were pools built out into the river, she shared. We had one at 96th Street on the Upper West Side that was built into the Hudson River and filled with river water. We had three or four of them through the city until the 1930s, when the water was considered too polluted. 
One of the many captivating photos the parks department has within their collection shows a group of five young men dressed in black and white striped swimming jumpsuits while on top of a diving board at the Astoria pool striking different poses in 1940. Burgess explained that the group of young men were called the Aquasinus and were a popular performance troupe that went around New York pools performing stunts. Another amazing image shows dozens of people waiting in the fountain water at Washington Square Park. The image was captured from the top of the Washington Arch on July 17, 1935 and shows how vehicles were once allowed closely around the fountain area, where it was permitted for people to splash around in. Slide me people have always dipped their feet in. I always thought it was strange and thought is this allowed, but it was actually built for that, which is nice, Burgess said. I think in a lot of ways these photos speak for themselves, because you just look through enough of them, and you start first seeing these massive crowds at the pool, and you're just amazed by how many people in this city these pools attracted over the years. Then you start looking closer, and you see these faces of these kids just having a blast, and it's really timeless. You could see it now, if this could be, now it could be the 1930s. But there is something really heartwarming about seeing these open access public spots and entertainment for kids and grown-ups in New York for decades. She also remarked that parks have long played a major role in the city as a free public gathering spot where you could go away from home, away from work. You knew it was monitored, it was maintained, and they are places you can go see friends and family and still be in the community with everything going on and not have to pay money. I mean that's really kind of the democratic ideal, where everyone gets a ticket. And the pools that are in the parks are really where people back then would spend hot summer days, something that still happens today. They became these summer hubs. From beginning with 12 public pools in the Big Apple in the 1930s, there are now more than 60 that can be found scattered throughout the five boroughs, where adults and children alike enjoy many days of fun in the sun, 